And we are pleased to be joined to get more information on that and other topics from the chairperson of the K-12 Appropriations Subcommittee in the Michigan Senate. He is Senator Wayne Schmidt from Michigan's 37th District with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Senator Schmidt, thank you for being with us again. Good to be with you, Tyler and Ronnie. Uh, always a pleasure to be on. I yeah, appreciate having you back. How have you been since we last spoke and how's your team doing? Uh, good. Everyone, uh, family's doing well up here and uh, staff down in Lansing's doing well. So uh, another uh, beautiful day here in northern Michigan, downtown Traverse City. Just went out and voted, made sure I got my sticker Very and nice. mind everyone polls are open till eight o'clock. I had my mask with me. I had a really kind of cool one friends of mine up in Elk Rapids Senate has some has northern Michigan and the peninsula and all of that I'm sure a lot of your uh, viewers and listeners uh, head up this way uh, for their vacation or their cottage so we're always glad to have them so I'm actually headed up that way this weekend it is such a beautiful part of our state what are your thoughts on the new restrictions or the old restrictions put back in place for your area? It it didn't really affect northern Michigan and the Upper Peninsula all that much. Uh, I, you know, it part of my frustration and I, you know, I wear a mask. I promote it on Facebook. Uh, I believe in all the science and all of those kind of things. I, a little frustrated with the execution of the governor's executive orders. I and I'm not playing partisan politics here. I honestly don't remember if we're at 150, 160, however many. You know, digging a little deeper, I understand the intent better. You know, I had to call some people in the administration, find out. It's really to deal with that Harper's situation in East Lansing. Not so much that the bar itself didn't do a good job of sanitizing. I know all of our restaurants and bars and lodging um, properties are doing their absolute best. But it was those younger people congregating. We saw that at McCarty's Cove up at, in Marquette, uh, Torch Fest on the uh, Torch Lake uh, sandbar there. I know there were other places that had similar parties. That was the intent. So it came across, you know, oh, shutting down all these bars. Well, you have a place like maybe the Beacon Lounge, top of the park there, Park Place Hotel, downtown Traverse City, Piano Bar. I don't know if you've been up there. You know, it's a good spot for a nightcap. Well, they probably do somewhere between 60 and 80 uh, percent, you know, of liquor sales, you know, appetizers, but not a lot of food. That's not the hot spot that <laughs> Harper's was, but it might have fallen into that or that corner bar in the UP where, you know, after a shift, uh, you might stop by, have a shot and a beer and then you move on and someone else comes in. So, you know, no offense to downstaters, but it was downstaters right in protocols and stuff for up north and not taking into account how we do business up here. So we accommodated and did our best. And I, as like I said, I always encourage people to wear their masks, socially distance, wash your hands and your face, uh, be respectful. Don't be the jerk that comes in and says, it's my right not to wear a mask. Well, it's the property owners, that store, uh, shopkeeper, the restaurant, whatever, their right to protect their staff, their family, put the mask on. That's what it comes down to. Senator Schmidt, you are also the chairperson of the K-12 Appropriations Subcommittee. The state very hard at work formulating its budget for the 2020-2021 fiscal year. There's another revenue estimating conference coming up this month in order to make sure that the state leadership is staying on top of the financials as they continue to be impacted by COVID-19 and in particular our schools are really interested in seeing where this goes as the estimates on per pupil funding cuts and, and overall cuts to education in the state of Michigan have been a hot button issue and something they've been focused on for a very long time. Any updates on the progress in, in terms of the budget negotiations in, in the state of Michigan and where those cuts to education may be coming? Uh, well, it's it's a challenge right now. We just passed the uh, we just passed the supplemental that you know, actually did increase funding per student about $175 per student. We took the CARES Act, the COVID monies from the federal government. We use those monies because as schools have to adapt and find new ways of distance or online learning and ways to deal with, you know, um, meal service, you know, for those students, uh, 
they had to find and adapt and, and, and be, quite frankly, reinvent themselves. So we were able to use a lot of those federal dollars, not have any cuts for the fiscal 2019-2020 budget, and actually increase funding uh, about $175 per student, did the $500 uh, per teacher, uh, because they had additional expenses and challenges. So we got through that and did it in a bipartisan fashion. Uh, you know, we can still work together here in the state. That's why I, I remain the eternal optimist. Now for the 2020-2021 budget that's due October 1st, I still remain optimistic, but a lot more challenged. Um, as we go into this, we're, we're talking about uh, pupil counts and how much they get per student uh, we're dealing with school districts. Are they going to have 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 percent of their students doing distance or online learning versus in classroom? Are we even going to be able to have classroom learning? Uh, there's a lot of uh, a debate out there right now. I am relying upon um, the doctors and the epidemiologists and, and those folks to uh, help guide me um, as to what we should do. I think that I, I want to encourage, and this is a parent of two high school uh, boys. One's a sophomore, one's going to be a senior. They miss their friends. They miss the interaction. We know that that's a better learning environment from the standpoint if you've got a great teacher, for example, but that student's not getting it and their, their next door, you know, their seatmate, you know, says, hey, this is how it is. Oh, yeah, thanks, Johnny, or thanks, Janie, for helping me figure that out. That kind of interaction is critical. But then again, we, we certainly don't want to put teachers or students at risk or when they go home, any parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, relatives. So it's, it's going to be a tough act. The other part is, as you mentioned, Tyler, the, um, the August Consensus Revenue Estimating co Conference, commonly referred to as the CREC, will come up in mid to late August. We'll see what the feds are doing. You know, we could be somewhere between five and 10%. You know, the estimates are varying how we're gonna have a shortfall in this, the school aid budget. Um, you know, at the beginning of spring when this was all hitting, you know, I, I was unfortunately Mr. Doom and Gloom, but I was just trying to be very realistic because we saw sales tax revenues drop off, income tax revenues. I chair the uh, appropriations budget for transportation, we saw gas tax revenues drop off, if the actual fuel taxes were behind in registration fees coming in. You know, it was a brave new world. And uh, so we're just, we're gonna hunker down. We're Right now we're dealing with the house package, the four bills to see how that looks to put kids back in the classroom or distance learning or any combination of that. So talking with superintendents, I was just speaking with uh, uh, Superintendent Vitti of the Detroit Public Schools uh, just yesterday, I talked to Superintendent John Van Wagner of Traverse City Area Public Schools, both TCAPs, of course, biggest district, uh, biggest school district in my Senate seat, the Detroit Public Schools, largest school district in the state, have to weigh all those different uh, considerations. So the student count day is always so important to the individual school districts and they do anything and everything to try to make sure kids are in the classroom on that day. How will that change going forward? Could that go away? And are you going to count them remotely? What's that looking like? That's a good question, Ronnie. Um, we are trying to figure that out. We know that this year it is not going to be the same way that uh, have to hit that 75% uh, number to get additional monies or uh, meet all the state requirements. I think the challenge is going to be, and, and many school districts, teachers, administrators, support staff are rising to the occasion on distance learning, online learning, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the challenge is going to be the frequency. Does it count? Do you count that student? Uh, if you check in with them twice a week, once a week. Uh, and these are, these are the things that we're, we're debating back and forth. I don't think that it can be a hard and fast 75% in a seat and will count it, meaning in, in the actual classroom. So we're gonna have to figure out some kind of hybrid. And that's what, that's what uh, myself and Senator Lana Tice, who chairs education policy in the Senate, 
working with our staffs and the, and the Senate uh, policy staff on how that's uh, how that's going to look. And and each school district is different. We have districts up here uh, where you you don't have quite the same numbers, thankfully, uh, of uh, of COVID cases uh, that uh, that you do have downstate. Although we've seen some outbursts, no, not outbursts, well, outbreaks, but mostly contained. So we're trying to see what's what's going to work for each school district. And we, we don't have a firm firm answer on that yet. The House sent over that package and uh, we're looking it over now and, and going through those machinations. Senator Wayne Schmidt with us. He's from Michigan's 37th Senatorial District. He's also the chairperson of the Michigan K-12 Appropriations Subcommittee. Lastly today, just a few more minutes with you, Senator. You had previously, uh, a few years back, proposed a bill that would ban our high schools in the state of Michigan from using names such as the former name of the current Washington football team. Um, that bill did yeah. not go through then. Of course, now we are seeing that be a hot-button issue in the state of Michigan throughout the country nationally as high school teams, uh, high schools are and other schools are changing their mascot names. Any any other work that you are doing now or that others in our state government are doing to address that issue as many schools are changing their those racially exactly nicknames. Uh, any other work that's still in process in making that law in some sense in the state of Michigan? Tyler, we continue to work on that. I do have a draft of that bill that I can introduce again. I've been working with many of the uh, tribes, the sovereign nations here in the state of Michigan. Chairman uh, Jamie Stuck <clears throat> has, um, he also heads up that uh, committee now, task force for the governor, I forget the name of it, that, that works on persons of color and how COVID have, has impacted that. And so Chairman Stuck has become a good friend working on that issue. And what we've tried to highlight is changing that. We've seen schools, you have Central Michigan University, for example, the Chippewas, work closely with the Saginaw uh, Sag Chip tribe there uh, <clears throat> to, to honor and respect that. We've seen uh, changes from the Redmen, uh, the Redskins, all of those schools are starting to do it on their own. There's the fund that they've established and that's what Chairman Stuck has been highlighting and I've been trying to get the word out too, that there are monies to transition um, uh, mascots, logos, band uniforms, sports uniforms, signage, all of that to take the burden off the schools that want to make those changes. And we've seen the benefits of that. I was very proud to introduce that bill. And, and even though it didn't pass, it did generate discussion. It generated movement to, to the uh, changes or making sure that those schools that honor uh, Native Americans are doing so in a proper way, that they're you know, not using the regalia or um, any of the symbols in an inappropriate manner and, and stress the history of, of uh, the first people here, obviously, in Michigan and in, the, in, in the North America. So I'm you know, very pleased to continue to work with all my uh, uh, the tribes that uh, here. I understand that it's they're, they're a federal, they're a sovereign, so they're dealing federal government to tribe. But they also realize we're all people and the, and the rubber meets the road here at the state and at the school district level. So good working relationships with all my tribes. I think I have the most sovereign nations of uh, any senator in, in uh, Michigan. Well, Senator Schmidt, we appreciate your time today and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Ronnie. Always good to be on Lakes FM. We appreciate having you on. Senator Wayne Schmidt from Michigan's 37th district with us on the Oakland County Megacast.